your hidden capital. See, I'm a capitalist, plain and simple. I make no apologies for it. I'm not trying to apologize. I'm not trying to justify anything. I'm a capitalist, but I'd like to submit that you are a capitalist as well. Stored capital, people usually think about that being money. And it is money, but it's not just money uh, that can be capital. Obviously, there's human capital that's usually called labor. They may talk about, oh, uh, you know, intellectual capital, meaning they have a bunch of really smart people working for a company and all those types of things. That's not what I'm talking about, even though you could consider that. If you've been a consultant for 20 years, you have a vast amount of capital in your head. Now, it may not be producing anything, but it is stored value, stored money. But I'm thinking more about the things that can be readily traded in your home. For example, in your living room, there are probably things there that you no longer care about, and yet they may be of great value to someone else. In your bedroom, in your garage, in your attic, maybe, you're, maybe you have a car that's old, but someone would love to have the parts of that car to restore their own car. But you don't think about it that way. You just think about it as an old car, and maybe you'll stick it in the paper or on Craigslist and just sell it for whatever you can get for it. Rather than thinking in terms of utilizing that as capital to trade for something else of value, rather than thinking about what you can sell it for for hot, cold, hard U.S. dollars, you might think in terms of, what could I trade that for? And that brings up something else. What is it that you're looking for? What do you need or want? You know, perhaps it's, I'm thinking right now about uh, ballet lessons for Aviance. I, I've been busy with this Twitter and blog thing, so I didn't get involved in that, but I could certainly have traded for her ballet lessons. I mean, one more or less student in a class, unless they're at the point where they only have room for one last student, and yet, once the class starts, it's a little late anyway. So why not have that extra student in exchange for something of value? Perhaps it's advertising on Twitter that they could use. Perhaps it's advertising on my blog or sponsoring my blog. And I would do that in exchange for giving ballet lessons to my niece, Aviance. At a clothing store, perhaps, again, Twitter advertising or business consulting or teaching them how to trade to get other types of advertising. And it doesn't have to be just direct. See, it may be that some advertising agency is looking for someone who's good with Twitter, that they can then provide, I can exchange my expertise on Twitter with other advertising or expertise that they have that then my clothing client could use. Perhaps my clothing client wants the design of a brochure or of a full page ad for a shiny four color magazine. That's not my area of expertise, but perhaps this agency does have that area of expertise within the agency. Well, I could trade them Twitter advertising for their expertise that I could then take and trade with the clothing store to provide leotards for Aviance to do her ballet. Now you think, well, that's a lot of hassle to go through. It's not if you have more time than money. If you have plenty of money and not a lot of time, then money is your best currency.